Okay, this is the uh, complete uh, version of uh, one of the uh, experimental Clems engine. I'll tell you what went wrong and some of the things I've experienced on this particular model. Uh, I did run this uh, multiple times when I was up north. Uh, I'm going to try to get it uh, into the uh, system again and try to start her back up. Uh, and basically what's going on is, uh, rule number one, this is not the proper hydrostatic motor I need. I need actually a vane motor. This is a pretty much not a typical vane motor. Vane motors are able to handle a lot of RPMs. This thing locked up around around 1100 RPMs, which is a no-no. So basically, some of the input of fluid, actually, when this is spinning, of course, this is locked down, this shaft actually is the output shaft, so it sits on the bearing with a flywheel. You have to start this with a, uh, a belt drive to actually get this to rotate. And what happens is, is that once it rotates, it sucks up fluid into here, into my little uh, uh, turbine here. This then gets fed into the main input of the hydrostatic motor. That then gets fed into the centrifugal pump. Now, here's another problem I ran into is this area, because it, what's happening is, is that it's creating a huge vacuum, but at the same time, there's some major uh, flaws in that, because once it starts to spin, it actually creates an air pocket that actually will uh, contaminate the uh, oil itself and cause it to uh, cavitate, which is multiple bubbles, and then it basically cancels itself out. So some of the modifications I made is on my latest uh, diagram. Uh, what I plan to do um, now is basically change a lot of this. Um, basically, I won't need a turbine. What I'm going to have is basically an inner uh, sleeve, just like this. The base has to be attached to the main uh, frame and allow the hydrostatic motor to actually spin with the vein pump. It has to be a vein type of a motor. What happens then is that the output of that vein motor goes to four individual uh, gear pumps. And those gear pumps, will let, each one has its own rim jet to it. So once the rotation actually occurs, there's a, uh, actually a cuminator in between that difference between the hydrostatic motor and the gear pump. So think of it as an inverse uh, piston. Instead of pushing, it actually pulls down and it it creates a huge vacuum which then causes the fluid to act like a ram piston that shoots straight up to actually make up the difference because once that pressure is is unequal what's going to happen is that fluid wants to move up forward causing the hydrostatic motor to accelerate and basically that's how the Clems engine I believe after all the rim jet experiments and everything else actually work once you get that velocity going the centrifugal forces are actually going to cancel out the hydrostatic uh, pumps itself due to the pressure the pressure always has one critical uh, aspects related to it and that is how many feet per second they're actually moving once an object is moving as fast as, as that particular uh, pressure it starts to cancel out that pump that pump can no longer be put under that tremendous load it's still moving at many feet per second but it actually cancels out that's actually a proven fact because I've done experiments on that so when you're dealing with this it, overall the key is is to create that that implosion effect allowing the system to actually uh, rotate a high velocity and what happens is is that that fluid is going to be flowing freely out and the, the uh, gear pumps keeps air from going into it so you're gonna have like a little nozzle at the each rim jet per pump but, and it doesn't have to be a lot of pressure, by the way. The pressure of the rim jet theory with killing it and all that is totally wrong because I've done it. And the problem is, is that you can have so many feet per second, but once you get to a certain acceleration, there is no more power that it creates. So it cancels itself out, almost like a rocket. And once you go to a certain speed, you, you can't go no faster. So it cancels itself out. But by allowing the centrifugal force to cancel out the hydrostatic mo pumps itself, now you're allowing it to flow so easily and spinning openly allows the hydrostatic motor to actually take on its own behavior. It's basically an internal tornado. You're creating a water spout which is moving fluid up through the system. The centrifugal force is throwing so much out that it actually creates its own energy. What keeps it going is that hydrostatic vein motor because that fluid has to go around that motor. To go around that motor, because we have our base locked down, it wants to then keep the rotation going. So that's basically the theory of the Clems engine that I just explained. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Talk to you later.